let me put it this way. No one is the villain in their own life story. Right. Right. So every embezzler, every Ponzi schemer that I ever investigated, they were able to justify and rationalize what they were doing because, you know, there's, I'm stealing the money from the teller drawer at the bank, but I'm not really stealing it. I'm just borrowing it. I need the money. And eventually when my ship comes in, when the lottery hits me, I'm going to return that money and no one will ever know. And my expertise, though, was identifying what are they telling themselves to rationalize their illegal activity. I figure that out and then I turn that on them. And, I, and say, well, you know, were you stealing this money so you could go out and party and use drugs? Or were you stealing this money because you had this extraordinary need for money because of the circumstances of your life and you intended to pay it back? And so if you're able to give them that A, B choice, they're always going to choose the choice that doesn't make them look like a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that in interrogation videos when police yeah. are trying to get somebody to admit and confess to a murder. They're like, listen, were you just stressed? Or did you do this because yeah. you're a toxic monster? Like, well, I was just stressed. Like, you Right, know. exactly. And so you make the conversation about their motivation and rationale rather about whether they did it or not. It's, right. like, it's like assuming the sale. You know, yeah. like, we know you did it. I just want to know why you did it. Yeah. Is it because you, you wanted to really, really hurt this little girl? Or is it because things got out of hand? Right. And you made a mistake. And you did something you could regret. And if you had a time machine, you'd go back and do it very differently. That's right. Then you cop to it. And 